Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to model a low poly character in Blender 4.1. Let's get started. First, we need a reference image that is a visual guide for modeling. Reference images provide clear dimensions, proportions, and details. It helps maintain consistency and accuracy throughout the modeling process. Search for Character Modeling Reference Images and save the image. Open a new Blender file. Press Shift A Image and import the reference image we have just saved. Press Alt R to clear the rotation. Rotate the image 90 degrees on the X axis. Press Numpad 1 to switch to the front view. Move the image on the X axis so that the character aligns with the 3D cursor. It must be just in the middle of the character. Move the image on the Z axis so the character's feet touch the ground. Move back the image on the Y axis. Press Shift D to duplicate the image and rotate 90 degrees on the Z axis. Press Numpad 3 to switch to the right view. Move the image on the Y axis so that the character aligns with the 3D cursor. Move back on the X axis. Go to the Outliner Editor and disable the Selection Restriction toggle, so we can prevent selecting the reference images accidentally. Alright, we're ready to model the character. Switch to the front view. Add a cube object. Hit the Tab key to switch to Edit Mode. Press Alt-Z to switch to the X-Ray Mode. S key to scale down. Enable the Move tool. Move the cube on the Z axis. Select the bottom vertices with the box selection and move them on the Z axis. Press Ctrl R and add a vertical loop cut. Select the left side vertices with the box selection and delete them. Go to the Modifier Properties tab and add a mirror modifier so we can work symmetrically on the x-axis. To prevent the vertices from going through the mirror axis, enable the clipping option. So, the vertices will be merged in the symmetry axis. All right, press Ctrl R and scroll up the mouse wheel to add three horizontal loop cuts. Select the vertices and move them on the x-axis so that they align with the reference image. Please use the box selection method, otherwise you cannot select the back vertex. Additionally, ensure that you are in X-ray mode. You cannot select the back vertices in solid mode. Select the top vertices and hit the E key to extrude out. Align with the reference image. Press Numpad 3 to switch to the right view. In the same way, align the vertices with the reference image. Now we have a basic torso. All right, let's extrude the legs. Select the bottom vertices and extrude them to the groin. Then, disable the clipping option and extrude the vertices to the knees. Move the vertices on the x-axis and separate them. Add two loop cuts and align with the image. Extrude the geometry to the feet. Add four loop cuts and align with the image. You can add extra loop cuts to align with the image. To slide any loop cut, press double G key. 
Go to the side view and align the vertices with the reference image. Don't forget to enable the clipping option again. All right, let's model the arms. Add a vertical loop cut in the middle of the model. Hold down the Alt key and left click to select this loop cut. Press double G and slide it down a little bit. Select these vertices and move them inside slightly. Switch the face selection mode and select these two faces. Switch to the front view and extrude out the geometry. Hit the R key to rotate and the G key to move to the elbow. S key to scale down. Extrude it to the wrist. Extrude to the fingers, G to move, R to rotate and S to scale down. Hit the S key, then Y key to scale up on the Y axis. Switch to edge selection mode, add a loop cut, slide it, scale up, and align the lower arm with the image. All right, it's time to model the head. Go to the right view and switch to the X-ray mode. Select the vertices and extrude. Move them on the Y-axis to align with the image. Extrude the geometry again. Add two loop cuts. Switch to the face selection mode and select these three faces. Extrude the faces. Select the side face, go to the front view, and enable the proportional editing tool. Hit the G key and scroll up the mouse wheel to scale down the influence circle. You can watch my tutorial on how to use the proportional editing tool from the top link. Select the front face, go to the right view and grab the face out. In the same way, grab the back and top faces out with the proportional editing tool. Disable the proportional editing tool. Switch to the vertex selection mode and tweak the head by grabbing the vertices. All right, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Align the character with the reference images. If needed, you can add extra loop cuts. All right, go back to object mode. If you are happy with the result, apply the mirror modifier and the subsurface modifier. Hide the reference images in the viewport. You can also dissolve the unnecessary edge loops. Select the edge loop, press the delete key, and dissolve the edge.
Let's create the hair. In the edit mode, switch to the x-ray mode. Press the C key and select these vertices by circle selection. Scrolling the mouse wheel, you can scale up and down the selection circle. Right-click to cancel the circle selection tool. Hold down the shift key to deselect. Press the P key and separate the selection. Rename the selection as hair in the outliner editor. Switch to the object mode and select the hair. Switch back to edit mode. Hit the A key to select all hair vertices. Go to the mesh menu, extrude and extrude the faces along the normals and drag the mouse. That's it. Go back to the object mode, select the character and switch to edit mode. Go to the front view and switch to X-ray mode. Press the C key and select these vertices. Hit the P key and separate the selection. Rename the selection as a T-shirt. Select the T-shirt vertices, press Alt-S, and scale up the geometry slightly along the normals. In the same way, let's create the pants, shoes, and body parts. Select all parts, right-click, and make the shade smooth. Alright. In this video, we have created a low-poly character. In the next tutorial, we will add material and texture using the Blender Texture Painting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.